Oh my goodness. These engines in these 8th generation Corollas have a problem with sticking piston rings which cause them to burn a lot of oil and eventually cause you to have to have the engine rebuilt or replaced. You used to hear Toyota Corollas would go 300 plus thousand miles easy, but um, apparently that's not the case. This one has about 170 something thousand miles on it. Now this is a Toyota Sequoia and I bought it with 200,000 miles on it. I buy most of my cars with 200,000 miles or more. This Tacoma has 415,000 miles on it and it's been great. But this thing is thirsty for oil. So let's see where we are on the dipstick right now. We're about a centimeter from the top line. So I'm going to put just enough oil in this to get it up to that dot. When you have a car that uses oil like this, you carry oil with you. Now this thing, just so you know, is not leaking oil. There are no leaks underneath. It looks pretty clean. It doesn't blow smoke that I've noticed. It is just the oil is disappearing. This is what I've been putting in it. Right on the money. So the oil is topped off and let's check the mileage. One hundred seventy thousand seven hundred and twenty miles. All right. Put the oil back in the trunk and wait and see how this thing does. So I've gone one gas tank, and that's my mileage. Let's see how far the oil's gone down in a week. Well, I thought I wouldn't have to add any, but. I don't know if you can see that. One tank of gas, one week. So that is below the bottom dot. Man, that's worse than I thought. Let's see how much oil it takes to get it back up to where it's supposed to be. What do we got in here? That is not quite half a quart. So we might need to go with a full jug so that we know we're measuring right. That is one quart of oil. Let's see what we got here. And that brought it up exactly to the dot. There you go, you can kind of see it. So it comes to the second dot now. So that is one quart of oil in one week or one tank of gas. So a quart of oil for every tank of gas. You saw the mileage. So my first hokey fix is to take the spark plugs out and put sea foam in the cylinders and leave it to soak a couple of days to see if it loosens up the rings and unsticks them so it stops burning oil because I do believe it is the stuck rings that's making it burn oil. So there are several different things that people recommend to unstick your piston rings. One of those is sea foam which is what we're gonna use. Uh, some people recommend Marvel Mystery Oil. Some people recommend a mix of automatic transmission fluid and acetone. Some people say PV Blaster. All sorts of things out there. But Seafoam seems to be the most highly suggested from what I found. And I already had some Seafoam on hand. 
and so we're going to try it out with seafoam. So what we're going to do is we're going to add equal amount of seafoam to each of the cylinders and give it a couple of days, move the crank a little, move the pistons up, up and down a little bit to kind of work the seafoam into the piston ring grooves. Hopefully that's what we're going to do and we'll see if it actually works. Oh, and of course, some people say you can't unstick piston rings at all. And some people say you can't unstick them from a top-down approach. You can only unstick them by introducing something to the oil that gets pumped up there or splashed up there from the bottom end. So we're going to try this top-end approach just to see if it works. Just an experiment. First thing I'm going to do is remove the coil packs. Those rings are hard to pinch. This looks very oily actually, so that cylinder appears to be burning oil. We'll check them all. There's number two. Number three. Number four. To me, they don't look a whole lot different. Maybe the first one is a little oilier than the others, but they're all pretty close. All right, now I wanna make sure all the pistons are about midway in the cylinders. So top dead center would be when whichever piston is all the way at the top of its stroke, and bottom dead center is when it's at the bottom of the stroke. We want them to kinda of all be in the middle of their strokes. So I'm going to stick something that won't damage the piston or the cylinder down in one of the spark plug holes. And we're going to watch it go all the way down and all the way up and we're going to mark it and then try to get it midway. And then all the cylinders should be midway because the way most four cylinders work, if not all of them, I don't know, maybe you know, the two middle pistons go up and down together and the two side pistons go up and down together and they work in opposite directions so if you can catch them all in the middle they'll all be midway all right so i'm going to try this little wooden dowel just put it in say the middle one here right down in the spark plug hole that's as far as it goes at the moment now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn the crankshaft down there is the crankshaft pulley so I'm going to put a socket on that and we're going to turn it a little and then we're going to watch this dowel go up and down. We're going to mark it when it gets at its lowest point and mark it when it gets at its highest. Let's put it in neutral. There we go. Brakes on. It is a 19 millimeter socket and it's just a regular half inch socket wrench. There we go. Now we're going to turn it. See that thing moving down, going down, and that is at the bottom right there. So let's mark it. Just marked it right along the top of the, the hole there. Now let's crank it up. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to mark halfway between these two dots. 
and it's pretty close, right? So now you put it back in and turn it until that lines up with the hole. Alright, that's about where I think we want it. Now let's take that out and see if they're all about the same. Eh, that's a little further down. That's of course about the same. This should be a little further down. Yep, that is probably good enough. Next, we pour some sea foam in there. I'm going to fill this little baby mason jar up to about that shoulder right there and pour that in each cylinder. Sea foam, fresh bottle. Put a funnel down the first tube and pour it in. Number two. All right, now I'm going to rock the crank back and forth just a little to kind of, I don't know, maybe wiggle the rings a little bit and allow some of the sea foam to get down in there. Now I don't want to turn the crank so that any of the pistons come all the way up because it'll force all the sea foam out of the spark plug holes. So I just want to just gently rock the crank just a little back and forth just to make sure the stuff gets worked into the rings if it's even possible. So I'm just going to give it just a little push this way so two tiny little pushes I'm going to switch the direction on my ratchet there we go now I'm going to do two tiny little pulls about the same distance and that's all I'm going to do right now now we let the engine sit a couple of days I'll come back and give it a couple more gentle rocks periodically and and then what we'll do is drive it for another tank of gas or the same amount of mileage that we drove that we went through a quart and see if we still go through a quart and you know I've heard that that it can get better over time like once you do this trick you drive it and drive it and the rings get looser and looser or break loose maybe suddenly eventually who knows how it works but we'll drive it for the first week check the oil again see if we're still losing a quart per tank of gas and if we are we'll keep an eye on it and i'll do a follow-up video to tell you if there's any changes in the oil usage oh but before i just leave the car be I'm going to put the spark plugs back in and just give them a couple of turns. I'm not going to crank them down or anything, just to keep dirt and debris from getting in there. And then I'm going to close the hood, of course. I'm going to disconnect the negative battery cable so nobody inadvertently comes out here and starts it. Let's move it around a little before work. Alright, we put the sea foam in here on Sunday and it is now Wednesday evening. A lot of the sea foam probably got past the rings, if I had to take a guess, and is now in the crankcase mixed with the oil, or not exactly mixed yet. We're going to try to crank it with the spark plugs out, because we don't want to actually start it. And we also want to disable the fuel injection system, so that it's not putting fuel into the cylinders. EFI or heater. Hook up the battery. All right, now y'all watch the cylinders while I turn it over. See if anything interesting happens. OK, 
guess it'd be good if I pulled that socket wrench off. Thankfully it fell off. Don't forget that, guys. The reason that's important is you don't want any liquid in the cylinders that could cause your engine to hydrolock. What happens if there's liquid and it comes up on a compression stroke? It can't compress liquid, so it just stops the piston and can break all sorts of things. Let's put the plugs back in and we'll crank it. Smells interesting. Just kind of smells like it's running rich. Some interesting clicky noises going on. Hopefully it's nothing wrong. It's just normal valve noise. That actually looks pretty dirty. Huh. I just changed this oil. Maybe we got some sludge out of the engine. Well now I don't feel so bad about doing an oil change already. Let's pour a little of this into something clear. I'm just curious what this looks like. Look at that. That is something else. That looks like three to five thousand mile oil right there. Huh. All right, let's change the filter and uh, put the new stuff in. We are perfectly to the top line again. I don't know if you can see that. Now, like I said, last time we went through a quart in a tank of gas, and you can see I've got a full tank still. So we're gonna drive this till it's empty, and whatever mileage that is, we're gonna check the oil again to see if we've used another quart in one tank of gas. All right, I just filled up with gas, and there is the mileage. We actually went over 302 miles. So uh, let's check to see how much oil we've used. 
As you know, we used a quart in 302 miles last time, or in one tank of gas. So, um, hopefully, we've used a little less. Well, we are just a smidge above the bottom line. So on the last go round in 302 miles, we were right on the dot. And this time, we're just a little above it. So if it helped, it didn't help much. Oh well. Well, you know what? I'm going to do another video where I try the bottom up approach with seafoam. So we'll add seafoam to the crankcase and run it for about 300 miles and then change the oil. And then we'll go another tank of gas and see if it changed anything. So subscribe if you want to see that.